So I will just get a short description of it. My point of view is that big data is just a lot of data. So the problem is how now we are receiving this data, which is more from the outside to the inside than from the inside. So we used to own data, and now we are able to get data even if we don't owe it, even if we don't have first party data, and get it from the web. So right now, let's just define big data with V um, as a lot of data, OK? And let's start from the beginning, because what's the purpose of storing data, of having any data? So the purpose is to analyze it, right? And this analyzing data is something inherent from the human being. It's not something that we invented with the creation of the computer. So let's start from the beginning. And the beginning is really the beginning. So we have this guy who was probably, he's not alive anymore, a hunter in the prehistoric age. And he mainly hunted boars, wild boars. The problem is that he was sick of eating the same thing all day. And he decided to start exchanging his product, his wild boars, with other products. In this case, we will take the example of an apple. After some weeks, he starts feeling hungry. And he doesn't understand why. So he starts an analytical process with a question. Because it always starts with a question. And the question in this case is, is this deal good for me? Is this deal good to me? What would be your answer? To change a wild boar into an apple, is it positive for him? What do you think? Depends on how many apples. Depends on how many apples, yeah? Exactly, that's the point. <laughs> so let's collect some data to analyze if the trait is good or not. Because without data, we are blind to analyze it. So depends is the correct answer in this case. So let's see. A boar is hard to get, hard to hunt, right? You have to get him. He will not come to be eaten. Huh? It decays fast. So you are not able to store it for a long period of time. The good point is that when you eat it, you're fed for quite a long time. However, an apple is easier to get. You just go to the tree and grab it. You can store it for a longer time than the wild boar, but after you eat one, you're probably hungry again. So now that we have some data, we can start the process of analyzing, which will start, of course, with an hypothesis, which is, hey, is the deal good for me or not? Uh, the data collection, or in this case, even the data crea creation, the, da the data processing, which is, OK, in this case, let's see. For how long am I fed up after eating a wild boar? Let's say 24 hours. And for how long am I fed after eating an, an, an apple? Let's say three hours. So let's do the maths. A third trade will be how many apples? Eight apples. Come on. So our conclusion is the Fair deal for us is to make the, this change of one wild boar for eight apples, OK? Which is a recommendation. So if you are, if you are exchanging one wild boar for one apple, please ask for more apples. You can do that. As this guy is really clever, he grows his business. Of course, he is thinking of better ways to do, to do the trades, as you can see. He grows the business. And now he has a lot of wild boars, OK? He not only hunts them, but he grows them. And now he starts distributing the boars to different areas of his hometown. What he sees is that in every trait, he has new parameters and new data to collect and to investigate. So the amount of data that, of data that he's storing, and in this case memorizing, he doesn't have any platform where to put the data maybe a stone, um, it's increasing exponentially. Every new uh, store is new data to collect, more columns, more features, OK? And also more rows. Every exchange would be a row. Every new store, every new product, every new location would be a column. 
which is exactly the problem that we're having right now. Let's jump to our time right now. The problem is that data, or access to data, is growing really, really, really fast. I don't know if you know Moore's law, which is about the speed. So it's, not, it's, not, it's about processing data, not about storing data. But actually, the exponential progression is the same one. So every Moore's law says every two years, I'm going to bring it to the data side, every two years, we double the amount of data that we have access to every two years. This is provided by Oracle, so it's a good source. And as you can see, in 2008, we not even had one zettabyte, which by the way, you have here the conversion is one billion terabytes, to put it in numbers that we understand. So right now, we have 20 times more data as we used to have in 2008. So let's change the sentence. Half of the data that we own will always be created the last two years, which is kind of amazing. So of course, to process this um, huge amount of data, we need some new techniques. This laptop is not enough anymore to, to process and store all this data, of course. So what we do is we shift to cloud computing. Of course, we have this, this good thing, humans, that we create solutions to problems. But we have the other bad thing, we are lazy. Before we don't have the requirement, we don't create a solution, of course. So what's happening right now is that data and the, sol and the technical solutions are having a battle to see which one arrives faster and, and before the, each other. So we have to design solutions while the amount of data that we have and own is also increasing exponentially. So the solutions have to adapt really quickly to the changing environment. Just to give you an example of what can you do with cloud computing. So how much would it cost a computer like this that has 128 gigabytes of RAM, of memory RAM, and 32 cores? How much, you said? 5,000 5, at least, yeah. So it's, it's quite expensive. You can actually rent it to Amazon for $6 per hour. So if you have to launch any process that would be impossible to do with this computer, or that will take weeks in this computer, you can rent a virtual machine for $6 per hour, so it, it does it for you. So in any case, you are, for example, launching a startup, or thinking, do I need to invest in computers right now? Yeah, of course, you have to invest in computers, user computers, that will give you access as a console to the computers that you will rent that are actually in Nevada or whatever it is. It, you don't care. For storing the data, it's actually the same. It has almost no cost. That's what happens when we hear that now, hey, there is no problem. You can store millions of data without cost, and you can process it really fast. What happens, the first reaction is, perfect. Just give me more data. And this only leads to disaster. Because getting data is still quite expensive. And accumulating without any purpose you are wasting your money. It's much more effective to do a different process. In order to do this process, we are trying to generate new professions related with big data. Now I'm going to focus on the first guy there and on this guy with the tie. 
The first, the first guy is what we say data analyst. And this guy is the one who will give you the relation between the data and the questions of the business. And this guy here is just the other guy five years older. He's just a senior and he's what we call data manager. So all the other guys are more technical positions. For example, this is the famous data scientist. And between the data scientist and the data analyst, the main difference is that the scientist is more software developer oriented, whereas the analyst is more business oriented. So that's the main difference because you will see that there is a lot of um, confusion or a lot of information being given right now about these about uh, two professions. The other guys, they don't interest us actually right now. And just for your information, those are average salaries at the United States in 2014. As you can see, the, the salaries are high, and the reason is very simple. When a department of, based in data is working quite well, a big company comes and buys out the whole department. So of course, the salary is increasing all the time. Let's focus on the data analyst. This. Uh, by the way, this uh, information comes from uh, Datacamp, which is a nice platform to do some online courses to teach you some R, for example. So this guy, as we can see here, he's also called data detective. Well, this is a cool way to say the same thing. His role will be to understand, I'm going to give a quite a different explanation to understand which data is required by the business. Because as I said, to collect a whole mountain of data and store it, it's, maybe it's affordable, but it's losing your money. Whereas the good thing is to know previously what data you have to get in order to answer the questions. And of course, before doing the analysis, you will not know, so first you have to have a lot of different data, process it, understand which data you want to focus on, and collect this certain data that you want to focus on, that it's relevant for your business. So that would be the process when you have a data analyst working with you. So now the mountain has a climber, which is a data analyst, and what he's looking for is for minerals to extract from the data. So maybe you have heard about data mining, which is exactly that. To check in the big mountain of data, which data is good, clean, and valuable enough to provide insights, insights from the business. As you can see, he's looking for some gold mines. And that means, in terms of data, to get which features are relevant and useful for your business, to know how clean the, your data is, because sometimes you have a lot of data, but it has a lot of missing values. It's corrupted somehow. And of course, when you know which data is relevant for you, you're ready to start machine learning processes, or as I called it here, pattern discovery. So machine learning, I'm going to take a, a time here because I don't have any slide to explain it. Machine learning is just to teach a machine, so to program a machine, to do a process automa automated process based on statistical tools that some data scientists together with mathematicians have like perfectioned on the, under the name of algorithms. And with these tools, we, we can mainly get with which data is relevant for us, and also build predictive models. So of course, for a business, to be able to foresee somehow the future, it's great. Imagine you could know what's going to happen in one year, or which people send which articles on a newsletter. So that's what we're doing right now with machine learning. And I'm going to go over it again 
on the next slides. So big data with V. Why with V? Why did I start with V? Anyone has a clue? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, she's, going, she's going to the point of the, there are a lot of articles right now talking about the three Vs, four Vs of big data, even five Vs, and I'm up to the last one, five Vs. And these five Vs are actually, I was going to start clockwise, but I'm going to start from the bottom. So, Volume, we have the guy here, which means that we can now process a big volume of data, which means that what you said at the beginning is now possible. You can store data, even data that you don't know what to do with, high volumes of data, and then start processing with the whole data at the same time. Now it's possible. Before, you needed to create samples which brings me to validity. Why big data provides validity to the results? Well, because you're not working with samples and you don't have to test all the time if this sample is representative of this, of this population, so let's end the test, please. And V for velocity, for speed, of course, now we can do real-time analysis, which was impossible before. Because now we have this machine that we rented for $6 or less, collecting the data, doing the process, so we put the software also on the cloud, and giving back the results. And this Swiss knife represents variety. Because as you know already, this is applicable to almost any field. You can do retail, you can do healthcare, you can do anything that you imagine, even if you don't own data, which is a very important point. What is the question mark, though? We're missing one V. So this is the most important one, and this is what changes the costs and the success of the process of data mining, of big data, of data analysis, which is focus on value. And I will quote this guy because it's very important. It's very, it, I can't stress how important it is to start the process thinking on which value do you want to add, in this case to your startup or to your business or to whatever process you want to engage from the beginning. It's really, really tempting in the big data world to focus on how much are we doing cool stuff, you know? But what is it providing for us? Lately, um, there is this Harvard newspaper that publishes in really interesting articles. There was an article with a header that was uh, 150 data scientists and still no business value. Maybe some one of you read it. It was an interesting approach to see how it's possible, even in big companies, and probably I should say, especially in big companies, to have a huge department analyzing data and not extracting any value. Because everyone is thinking how to solve the technical problems to analyze data, but who cares about the results of this analysis, right? So we need to focus on the value we want to extract in order to reduce costs and reduce the time of this analysis. And that's all from my side. Thank you very much. <laughs>